you could make an argument. I'll try it out here and see what see how you can respond to it. That India or Bharat Varsha, to be more precise, under the Pandavas was to some extent a secular kingdom. Because if, if you look at the great state religious events, such as, say, a Rajasuya sacrifice or other, the, the, the Soma Yagya, which is basically the uh, subject of the Vedas, or the Rig Veda. So I think you could argue that these great state events, these great Yagyas, were not seen as religious because they were seen as simply complying with the laws of nature and the higher order, uh, you could say, bureaucracy of the universe. And so if you, if, and, and, and so for example, Yudhisthira did not force everyone to become a Vaishnava. So even when Krishna was established as the Agrapurusha, that did not necessarily reject all other systems of worship that might have no, been... No, it, it, it was just a state honor. Oh, okay. It was a state honor. Like, for example, at the Rajasuya sacrifice, when Shishupala both figuratively and, and, and literally lost his head. Um, Perfect, okay. Yeah, Krishna was declared to be simply the most honorable person. It's like nowadays, let's say, for example, uh, you know, who has a right to address the joint houses of Congress, the Senate and the House of Representatives. And so it's an honor that's given. For example, very few leaders are invited, foreign leaders are invited to address the, the joint houses of Congress. It's a great honor, but it's not religious. And so Krishna... People were simply saying that Krishna is the greatest person in terms of his, you know, measurable power. And so if you understand that the Vedas, the sacrifices, are simply um, responding to and dealing with the objective laws of nature, then okay. it, it's not, I mean, in what sense is it religious? Again, there were no... There wasn't like a Vaishnav church back then. It's not that, okay, everyone has to join the Vaishnav church. Or, for example, even later when Buddhism was spreading in Jainism, in, in Indian, you see like in Kashmir, many other places, it, it, if a Buddhist king took over, then, okay, it's a Buddhist kingdom now. So if a Buddhist king took over, but it's, but it didn't mean everyone had to become a Buddhist. It wasn't forced conversion. Okay. And... So, obviously, you could say ancient Bharata was not secular exactly in the sense that modern states are, but in some senses they were. They, so there was some were. state patronage of a particular religion. So, for example, we have the Rajput kings when they become, became Gaudiya Vaishnavas during post Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's time. They funded or promoted the Govinda <laughs> temple instead of the Ram temple. Yes, but yes, that was but not... That, no, and that's also, but that's also much, much later in history. Yeah, because you actually don't find temples very much in the Mahabharata. Yeah, that is true. For example, in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, there are explicit descriptions like the Gundicha Temple or the Jagannath Temple. There aren't. You don't find major events taking place in temples. People go to shrines, which could just be a little like, for example, Rukmini went to offer her. Respects to the to to the goddess mm. before her wedding, but it, it's not described as as a big building. What are the? I'll tell you. You know the big buildings. There are certain places in the Mahabharata that are explicitly described as big buildings, and basically there are two or or maybe three categories. There's there's palaces, residential areas, like in Dwarka and Hastinapur, and so. People had beautiful homes, which are described, you know, they're described as very opulent. There were, uh, you could say, almost like legislative assemblies. Then like the like in, in the in Dwarka, it was called the Sudharma Hall. Mm. And and the and the Pandavas, I forget the name, but they had there, so there were great halls for uh 
basically for you know the the elders, the seniors, the power people gathering. There were um, there were palaces for kings. So kings had palaces. Other very prominent people, usually royalty, had you know their own beautiful mansions. And then you had assembly halls. But what you don't so so what I'm saying is there are explicit descriptions of magnificent buildings in Shastra, but never a description of a great building which is a religious center. That's striking. As you're telling this, Maharaj, it struck me that when we talk about Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pilgrimage, it's primarily he's going to holy places and visiting deities. But if we talk about Ram's journey during his exile, or even Pandava's journey, it's primarily meeting sages. It is not like visiting temples. No. Meet, Ram meets August, Agastya and he meets Sharabhanga and like that. Or, or even Vidura, Vidura or Balaram's pilgrimage. Oh, yes. If you look at Vidura's pilgrimage, Balaram's pilgrimage, uh, Arjuna's pilgrimage, when he, you know, when he has to leave for a year, he has to leave because he entered upon Yudhisthira and uh, Draupadi. Hmm. So we, we have descriptions of pilgrimages to holy place, but not once in any of these Balaram's pilgrimage, Arjuna's pilgrimage, Vidura's pilgrimage. We never hear about them visiting a big building. Now, if you look at Lord Chaitanya's pilgrimage in South India, he's going, you know, we, there's, you know, Ranganath, there's, there, there's magnificent South Indian temples. And then uh, under Lord Chaitanya's authority, uh, the six Goswamis built beautiful temples, Mandirs and Vrindavan. I mean, the Kusum Sarovar, which is, I think, the most beautiful swimming pool in the, on, on earth. And so this type of monumental architecture, you know, the magnificent temples in South India and all over South India. And so, but none of that, none of that is described 5,000 years ago. <laughs> so therefore, I'm saying in some ways, not in every way, you could argue that Yudhisthira had a secular kingdom okay. in some ways. Not every way, but in some ways. So here we are using secular in the sense that the state does not promote any particular religion or oppose any particular religion. When the state intervenes, it is primarily because a person is or a particular king is disrupting the law and order. So for example, yes. when Jarasandha is attacked, it is not because he's worshipping Shiva, but because he is slaughtering kings in a sacrifice Supposed yes. to be for Shiva. Yes. 